Welcome back. It's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure review. Today from Bandai Namco in their Dragon Stars line, we are featuring Cell in his final form. Okay, so uh, this is the character from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Um, I remember when I was first introduced to him uh, in the late 90s. He was such an odd-looking character. Uh, he's very, like, bug-like in his design. Um, you know, almost like a beetle with the crazy wings and the very interesting color scheme. Visually, in any of his forms, he's very, very unique. Um, very eye-catching, kind of unsightly, but you just can't take your eyes off of him. There's something very uh, unearthly and just strange about the character. Um, beautiful looking figure. Uh, one of the tallest figures in the line, especially with the crazy cone helmet he has up here. Uh, his armor is wonderfully textured uh, with this beautiful pattern with two different shades of green. He retains his classic color scheme uh, with the light gray, the purple, the black. Uh, he has the facial markings with the very stoic, serious look. And it's a it's just a really nice looking figure. Uh, as I stated, this his final form his, is probably his most iconic form. Uh, when people think of Cell, I think this is the one they think of. Um, in terms of his articulation, Cell's head turns left and right. It's a little bit tight, but it it does rotate. His arms move um, like that. They go outward. A uh, bicep cut, double jointed elbows, articulated wrists, and he does feature multiple hand options, uh, but for me, I decided to go with open palms. Uh, cell swivels at the waist. His legs kick up, double jointed knees, articulated ankles. And one thing he also features, it's kind of cool that they have it, but it's almost pointless because... It doesn't really do much. His wings, or cape, if you will, on the back are actually articulated. But the range of motion is really limited. And when you take this figure out of its package, it, the wings kind of pop off. So you have to kind of gently reinsert them uh, into their sockets right there. And they are ratcheted, but it's kind of pointless because, like I said, the, the range of motion is very limited. And here it is. It, it kind of popped off. And this is how it's assembled. If you look on the inside, there's, uh, I think, maybe three or four indents for the ratchet. And then here, uh, this really small pegs. So you just kind of have to gently put it back in. And it, it, they don't really hold that all that tight. It's kind of a loose fit. And it's like I said, it's kind of pointless that it's um, articulated because it doesn't really do much. I kind of feel like they should have just made this a permanent fixture to the upper shoulder and make, make, made this of a softer, rubbery plastic material um, because it just seems more of an annoyance than anything else. But visually, it adds to the look of the character. You know, he definitely needs it. It's just in ter the practicality of it in terms of the action figure is just not really there. Uh, but overall, beautiful figure. Um, I think he's def definitely worth the purchase. Uh, Cell is definitely one of the more memorable villains from Dragon Ball Z. Um, you know, everyone remembers the Cell games and how important a role that played in the history of Dragon Ball, especially Z. So yeah, great figure overall. Um, can't recommend him enough. All right, so let's wrap this one up. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer subscriber, thank you so much for continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.